Hey guys, we have here fast forward racing engines, Coyote short block. This is how the engine will come from us, shipped to you. Today we were going to unbox the engine, mount it up to a stand and assemble a long block and take you along for that. Okay, so we got the lid off the crate, we got the strap off the engine, so now we can see the engine. As tempting as it is to cut this open and look at your brand new engine, you basically, you wanna wait as long as possible to, to unseal this engine. This engine is wrapped in plastic and then cellophane uh, to seal it from any moisture. The cylinder walls are bare metal right now and exposed to the environment. They're susceptible to rust from the moisture in the air. Uh, so as bad as you wanna look at the new engine, um, do your best not to unpackage it until you're ready to assemble the engine. So if your project is a couple months out and you have your engine, look at it like this, um, but I would leave it wrapped up as long as possible. Included with the engine is uh, some paperwork here. This is basically a startup procedure uh, for the engine. It goes over oil weights and how you're gonna run the engine in for first startup and break-in. Here the engine's gonna come with a small lift plate and a hook, it actually says lift hook right here. Um, and as we said, we don't wanna um, unwrap the whole thing. So basically I'm just gonna cut a small incision here um, so we can get our hook on for our engine hoist or tool to pull the engine out of the crate. So we're gonna use our car hoist to get the engine out of the box. Uh, you can use any method available to you. If you have an engine stand, cherry picker kind of deal, use that, uh, whatever's convenient for you. Uh, at this point, I personally prefer to put the rear main seal cover on the engine because it's kind of hard to access once the stand's in place and that needs to be on before the oil pans and, and things are in place. So we'll cut an opening to access the part that we're working on. We'll get that plate sealed on there and then we'll bolt it to the stand. the factory rear cover. We use the factory sealant path and sealing method to attach this to the engine. So the plate's installed, we're going ahead and torque down the hardware. Uh, basically any bolt that's in the engine that is a factory bolt and a factory system will use factory torque specifications. Aftermarket bolts will use the torque specifications provided with that hardware. For the next step, we're going to attach the engine to the engine stand. Now every engine stand is different in the sense that the spacing here, some are really long, some are short, they're, they're all pretty much different. So what's important here is to have the proper hardware, which is this 10 by 1.5 pitch thread that will go through this and give you about an inch of threads engaged into the engine block. All these holes are pass-through holes, so the length of the bolt, if it sticks out some, is okay, so you don't have to worry about it bottoming out inside, but you want to have this full inch of thread engagement and make sure you're not running up on the shoulder of the bolt.
Now the engine's attached to the engine stand, we're gonna start with the assembly process. We're gonna finish taking the bag off the engine and then move on to putting the cylinder heads on. You'll notice bolted on the top here in a Ziploc bag is a single bolt and a washer. Uh, just take this and put it to the side. This comes with the ARP main studs and is used to attach your oil pump pickup to the main stud. So you'll need this in a later step. So now we're gonna go ahead and install the ARP head studs into the block. Uh, when I do this, I typically do one side at a time just because it's easier to work on the, the cylinder head with it facing up on the engine stand. You don't have to keep rotating it back and forth um, to do one side than the other. So I'll complete this whole cylinder head install on this side, then I'll rotate the engine and do the other side. It's just uh, less steps and less chances uh, for anything to happen. So when we install the, the head studs, you're gonna install them lightly until it reaches the bottom of the thread, the thread will stop turning. And then at that point, I back the head stud off one turn. What this does is it allows when you're torquing the bolt, if the stud turn sun is not pushing against the bottom of the aluminum block, which can crack the boss of the head stud um, if, if that exceeds the force too much. So when we put them down until they stop and then back them off one turn, this allows you uh, a thread of clearance down there to ensure that you're not bottoming out the, the threads and cracking the block. At this point, we're ready to install the cylinder head gasket and the cylinder head. I like to make sure that both the, the deck surface and the head surface are both clean and dry and free of any contamination or oil uh, for best head gasket sealing. When we install the head gasket, uh, basically it's going to go over the dowels and the dowels are going to center the gasket in the cylinders. Uh, these are billet dowels that Fast Forward makes and installs in the engine, so they are of the exact size. I've had a gasket come and it was missing the centering part on the layer. What that did was it can allow the gasket to not be centered in the cylinder and then it won't have the proper sealing. So it's just one thing that always double check when you put the head gasket on that you don't have um, excessive side to side play that it's centered in the cylinders around all the cylinders so it can seal properly. So these cylinder heads were removed from the customer's engine. They sent us the long block in. We disassembled the engine to prepare um, the parts for the new engine. The cylinder heads were sent to fast forward racing engines for them to go through. Uh, this has foray valves and PAC springs and the head has been cleaned, surfaced and decked. So when you get your engine, depending on what you're doing, if you have a set of new heads or if you're reusing an old set from your engine, you want to make sure that a machine shop has gone through them, make sure they're good and did the deck surface to assure everything is flat. Install the head over the studs. You want to make sure that it goes down nice and you're not uh, angled each way because the stud could take material aluminum off and get down in the surface. So it wants to go on smooth without a lot of contact and you'll feel it set on the dowels and set flush on the deck surface. If one's up, it would kind of be teetering. You'll know it's not correct. So it's down, it's flat, it's flush, and now it's ready to finish the hardware installation. So at this point, we're going to install the washer and the nut from the ARP head stud kit. We're going to follow ARP's instructions on this, uh, which is to install the washer dry and clean into the head surface, and then use the Molly lubricant for the washer face and the threads for the nut.
to apply the assembly lubricant, uh, I use an acid brush. I cut down the bristles some so they are less likely to fall out when they're long. They're, they're kind of harder to work with. And I put it on a piece of cardboard and go to town. Uh, so we lubricated the washer to nut surface and the thread surface, went ahead and installed all of the retaining nuts uh, hand tight on the cylinder head. And now we're gonna go ahead and complete the torque procedure. Uh, this particular stud used a 14 millimeter 12 point socket, nothing real special. The torque procedure is on the instructions for the ARP studs. It's a three step process and we'll go ahead and start that now. Next up, we're gonna slide on the engine oil pump. Uh, this is a boundary oil pump with a billet oil pump gear. Uh, so basically you wanna look at the flats of the crank. This is what drives the oil pump. You wanna kinda get it roughly lined up before you put it on just to make it a little easier for yourself. And then it's gonna sit flush up against the face. Once the oil pump's installed, uh, I like to rotate the engine over just to assure that there's, uh, you don't feel anything. It should just be nice and smooth that the oil pump isn't catching or doing anything funny on the inside. And then at this point, we'll also position the keyway uh, to the position for uh, the first timing chain, which is the Gen 2 timing system. So that's gonna be around the five o'clock position.
Now the cylinder head is bolted on. Uh, we're going to ahead install the lifters and the followers for the valve train. Um, these are reused from the other engine. They've been soaking in oil. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. The lifter will slide down. There's a retaining clip to make sure that's in place. And then the follower sits on the valve. When you install the camshafts, uh, they'll be in a position where the lobes aren't putting any spring pressure. So when you bolt them down, uh, it's in a neutral position. The factory timing procedure is what we're following on this. Uh, and if you have that manual, there's detailed pictures that show you basically indicate where these marks will be for where the camshaft's gonna be, um, and then it'd be timed in that position. The camshaft caps on both cylinder heads are numbered. Uh, these are very specific into the order that they go on and to which cylinder head that they go on. When these caps are installed and the line hone is done, that cap has to be in that position for the circle to be correct. There's not a reference point to left or right on the caps, so you need to be sure when you're removing the caps from your engine that you mark them in a way that you can put them back in the same spot that they came off of. If you mix them up or mix them up side to side, you will have camshaft failure, the oil clearance won't be correct, and you'll have engine failure. Now that the camshafts are installed on the engine, we're gonna go ahead and install the timing system. We'll start with the secondary chains and the camshaft sprockets on both banks, and then do the primary chains. All four chains have been soaking in oil, um, so they're properly lubricated upon startup.
The timing system is now installed and the factory timing procedure was completed, so everything now is in time. Uh, you might have noticed as we were putting it on that there was a, a red bracket on this side. What this does is it flips the secondary tensioner to come from the bottom. Uh, the benefit of this is that all the chains should be tensioned on the non-driven side of the chain. Uh, so that's the slack side of the chain. Uh, from the factory, this one uh, is kind of backwards in the sense that it's tensioned on the drive side instead of the slack side. So this bracket flips it and what that does is allow the timing to be more precise. Um, it's a little thing, but for high horsepower engines, it's beneficial. The secondary timing chains have also been replaced with an upgraded chain. They have a larger pin and are stronger. The primary chain is a factory part. Uh, they have been proven to be strong and there's no upgrade uh, for those at this time, but they, uh, they do well and don't break. The secondaries is where you wanna go ahead and do the upgraded chain. Uh, pretty much anytime you have them off, you're gonna replace that with, that with that better chain. So now the engine is basically assembled. So from here, we'll put the front timing cover on, valve covers on, uh, balancer, oil pump pickup, and oil pan. We're gonna put on the uh, front cover, uses the, uh, the stock gaskets here, and then a little bit of sealant uh, where the cylinder head meets the deck to make that surface seal better. And again, sealant is used where the front cover meets the cylinder head before the valve cover is put on. On the engines we build, we use an ATI dampener. If you're doing this at home, be sure you follow the ATI instructions that come in the box, which requires the measurement of the crankshaft and remeasurement of the inside diameter of the snout to determine the press clearance. Uh, this is pressed on, but there's an amount of press that is required uh, for the crankshaft and for the pulley. This one was a little tight. We had it honed uh, to the proper clearance, so the insulation will be smooth and no damage will be caused. The installation bolt is purely just a longer bolt, uh, so when the balancer is out, um, it will reach the threads of the crankshaft and then pull it in. Um, I like to use a bearing in place of that uh, to make it easier to turn the bolt. There's not as much friction on the washer, washer surface. I like to install the dampener with the oil pan off so I can visually see when it bottoms out against the timing chain gear so I know fully that it's on. Then we'll remove the installation bolt and install the ARP bolt and torque it to spec. Now that the balancer is on and we've visually seen it press fully on, we'll install the oil pan gasket with the built-in windage tray, oil pump pickup, and then the oil pan. Again, we'll apply sealant to the positions of the block where two castings meet each other.
This next part is pretty important. Uh, it's very important, actually. This is a new modified oil pump pickup stand with the ARP main studs. Uh, the stud is protruded taller, uh, so if you use the factory stand, uh, the clearance between the oil pump pickup and the factory oil pan is too little and you'll start the engine from oil. Uh, so this one here is from Fast Forward Racing Engines. It's already the correct length for a stock pickup and a stock pan arrangement. Uh, so you can install that and, and know that you're going to be the proper clearance. Now this oil pump stand is used with the arrangement of a uh, generation one or generation two metal oil pan with this pickup tube. Uh, the later engines, there's a three or four variants of oil pans you use, so you're going to want to just use the correct pickup arrangement and oil pan for your application. The gen three engine, the oil pump pickup is built into the oil pan, so it doesn't have this stand. But basically, if you're going to use the older style metal pan, this is required. And the bolt that we had earlier that was ziplocked to the top of the new engine, this is where it goes. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video of us assembling this Coyote engine. If you're interested in purchasing a short block or getting a long block assembled by us, uh, please feel free to reach out. Or if you have any questions about the Coyote engine and the platform in general, our sales team would be happy to talk to you.